JavaScript is hard. Getting a developer job is even harder. If you want to master front-end development, you must adhere to a few basic principles. Everyone is looking for that unicorn developer that knows how to create anything. And then you might feel a bit discouraged, you might feel like quitting, but I'm here to help you. And this advice from this video is gonna massively change your perspective on things. You'll know what to do to master JavaScript so you can land that first remote developer job. So this is for you if you're a complete beginner and you don't know anything about JavaScript, anything about programming. And this is also for you if you have some you know, skin in the game, you've built a few apps, you've been coding for some time and you don't know exactly what to do. This advice here is gonna change everything for you. Okay, so let's get started. The first piece of advice that I can give you is that the advice that got you started won't get you to the finishing line. Why is that? Well, beginners have different problems than, you know, people that have more experience. And most of the time, if you look up online how to get a job, how to do this, everything is kind of suited towards beginners. And beginners have a very, very easy task to do, okay, in theory. Sit down and write code. It doesn't even matter what you are creating, right? You just have to do it. And for advanced people, you need some sort of more tailored advice depending on the struggles that an advanced person have or has. Sorry, my English is not perfect. And let me tell you a little story about myself, right? So I'm a YouTuber, as you can see, you can watch me here on YouTube, right? And the typical advice for YouTubers is to just post videos. And I've done that for three years. But the problem is that that advice that got me started is not enough for me to go from 4,000 subscribers to 100,000 subscribers. So if I take the beginner advice, which is just post videos and just post videos that people like, I won't get anywhere. So I have to take a different type of advice, advice that is suited for people that have 5,000 subscribers, 10,000 subscribers, 20,000 subscribers, and so on and so on. There are different layers, okay, different categories of people that need different type of advice. So as I mentioned before, as a beginner, the only type of advice that you need is just get started. Get started with free resources if you want. I also have a free course, you can check it out. It's, it's on a platform called School. You can get started with web development there. But what do you do after? That's the problem and that's why you cannot find the answer, right? If I'm trying to learn a skill like copywriting, I can type in how to learn copywriting or what is copywriting. Then I'm gonna get a few hundreds of thousands of videos and most of the advice there is very basic. But if I wanna get into, you know, the details and become an expert copywriter or an expert developer in your case, that advice is gonna be hidden. But the great thing about this is that I know that if I wanna learn a skill, I just need to find someone that is teaching the basics online and I'm gonna look up to see if that person has a program. I've bought so many programs for, from people that were offering different kind of things because I wanted to skip you know, the queue. I wanted to figure out what is the missing link and Again, to bring it back to my YouTube journey, I paid someone to tell me what they think about my thumbnails. And now as you can see, all my thumbnails include some code in the background. Why is that? Because the advice for me at my stage is to put code and laptops and all this stuff in the background of my thumbnails so people know I'm talking about coding. I wasn't doing that before. So when you start, get, just get started. Once you become more advanced, it's time for you to get a mentor, someone to give you advice, someone to tell you what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, so you don't waste time, so you not get frustrated and so on and so forth. The next point is to master data. Data is probably the most important thing that, you know, as a developer, you have to understand. Arrays, objects, these two things are everywhere. If you look here on YouTube, the comment section here, if there are any comments, it's filled with objects and those objects are inside an array. Every comment that has replies to it, that thing is actually an array of objects. If you look at the recommended videos on the sidebar, that's an array and each video, it's an object. So you need to teach yourself and to train yourself to see everything as data. This type of advice is for both beginners and for advanced people as well. I've been speaking with a lot of people that come into my free consultation call and they are saying I'm learning from Free Code Cam, from Code Academy, from Udemy. And I know about arrays, I know about objects, but I don't know how they apply to the real world. Before you learn the theory about all this data, try to figure out where this data is applied. Where do we use it, right? 
What is your job as a front-end developer? Mostly to show data in a pretty format, in some way or another. That's your unique job. And if you fail to understand data, you will not be really well-paid developer. Probably you will not even be a developer. You'll play around with some jQuery, with some HTML, some CSS, some Bootstrap, and then you'll be making $100 websites on Fiverr. Look around. All apps are using data. And if you stay away from learning array methods, object methods, if you stay away from manipulating arrays, from manipulating objects, then you are literally going to shoot yourself in the foot. You want to learn a framework like React, sorry, not framework, but library like React. The whole thing is based around like state, objects, arrays. You cannot create anything without this. So instead of putting this thing under the rug, I would suggest to you to tackle it head on. And I see this mistake with a bunch of people, even in my program, right? They go through it, they go through the lessons, they kind of get it, and then they move forward. And then one day they are stuck. Why? Because they forgot how arrays work. They, they forgot how the data flows in their application because they didn't pay attention to the fundamentals. And because they are with me, I'm telling them, hey, go back and study how map works. Go, go study how filter works. Go study how reduce works. And they fix it. But for you, if you do not have someone like me, I would highly encourage you to practice working with data as much as possible because otherwise your life is going to be very, very, very difficult. The next point is to train your fundamentals. This kind of piggy banking over the previous point, I guess that's how you say it. And this is about like understanding that every application is made from smaller applications. And if you cannot create small applications and if you don't understand the patterns of that application, you won't be able to react without thinking. Really, you know how to walk without thinking about moving the right foot in front of the left foot, left foot and so on and so forth. Why is that? Because you've trained yourself over the years. You have a habit of tying your left foot first and then the right foot second, right? You have trained yourself and with programming you need to train your fundamentals so you do not have to think. You have to get to that point where if someone says, I want you to build this thing inside this app, you don't even need to like think too much. It's already done in your head and you just have to actually write that code. Now I want to address something really important here. Stay away from ChatGPT. If you are learning code right now, stay away from ChatGPT. Because if you teach yourself to use ChatGPT from now and you don't have the pet patterns and the basic understanding of like how things actually work, it's like playing GTA with cheat codes. You'll be in God mode all the time, right? But then when you have to play multiplayer with someone, you'll be absolutely smashed. So later, yeah, sure, use ChatGPT, 100%. But until you do not know exactly how to use your programming skills, stay away from that. Like I highly recommend you to stay away from that. Otherwise your powers or your ability to use ChatGPT will be dramatically lower, right? I understand that you don't want to skip over steps and you want to get that first developer job faster. But coding is like writing a book. If you want to write a bestseller, if you want to write a proper book, you must learn how to write basic sentences, basic paragraphs first and get really good at those. And then you put them together into essays, into chapters, and then you create that book. But you cannot skip steps. It's very important to not skip steps. And I know many of you, you are doing a bunch of courses right now, Udemy, Codecademy, whatever else is out there. And you are like literally having probably dozens of them. But it's not about how many coding courses you are going through, but how many coding courses go through you. What does that mean? It's like, what do you get after you finish that course? Do you actually understand what you're learning or you are just copying stuff? You're just following along an instructor. Because if you just follow along an instructor, no matter what level it is, if you are into React right now and you just started coding like last month, trust me, you don't know anything. So make sure that you really understand what you're doing. Don't just move on for the sake of moving on. If you are not comfortable with the race, stick with the race for a while. If you're not comfortable with document get element by ID, if you are not comfortable with querying elements, modifying them. Don't move on. Stay there. Try to understand them. And another thing that I want to add here is that 
Every single concept that you are learning in programming, let's say a variable. For a beginner, a variable can be just var a equals 5. But as you are advancing, you understand that it's more than that, right? You start to see like the depths and the levels that every single thing that you are doing as a programmer, the more experience you have, the more you understand like how many things you've missed in the past, right? So don't take anything for granted. Don't take any information for granted. Really go into the first principle. So for example, if you are not really good with functions, figure out what a function is, not a function in JavaScript, but what a function is, where it was created, what was the purpose of it. Go to the first principles. And then you ask, what is a function in programming? And then you understand that. And then you ask, what is a function in JavaScript? Like try to understand everything from a holistic point of view. And that's how you actually master this because it's a skill. It's not just something that you do with your eyes closed in the beginning, right? If you wanna get to that point, you have to put a lot of time in and a lot of effort. The next thing that I wanna talk about is programming is hard. You probably knew that programming is hard. You probably were expecting for programming to be hard. You probably were expecting for getting that first developer job to be hard. But for some reason, whenever you are experiencing it, you want to quit, you say it's a scam, you say nobody's hiring juniors. Why is that? Why do you say that? Because until now, you didn't know how hard feels. So take that in for a moment. You knew it was hard, you were expecting it to be hard, but now you know how hard feels. And this is like a crucial mindset that you need to have. You never experienced hard till now probably, or maybe it was like years and years and years ago. So the reason why, you know, things feel like weird, things feel like they're taking you out of your comfort zone, is because you never experienced how hard it is. How can you feel that? It's, it's impossible. So what you're experiencing right now, it's normal. And in a few months, it's gonna be like a walk in the park. But you need to give yourself time to, to go through this, overcome this challenge, and to get yourself on the other side, you know, of the river, if that makes sense. And point number five is to lower your ego. And this is one of my issues, probably one of your issues. You think you know everything, you think you got this, but in reality, you don't. Okay, and in reality, I, I'm not really that good at many things. I'm good at a few things. I could be better, but I want to be a master YouTuber, right? I want to be really good at YouTube. And the only way to get better at YouTube is by being surrounded by other YouTubers, by being taught by YouTubers. If you want to become a swimmer, if your best friends are swimming in the Olympic team, and if you swim every day with them, you'll start to gain an edge over the regular chubby friend that you have that's not swimming every day, right? So if you wanna be a programmer, the best way to do it is by having a mentor. And yes, I'm plugging myself in here, but if you hear me out, you'll understand why. There are so many things that you do not see and cannot be fixed. If you do not have a second pair of eyes that can look up at the thing that you are doing. There are so many things that you should be avoiding, but because you do not have a mentor, someone that is in the industry and does whatever you want to do, you don't know how to avoid. For example, I heard someone wanting to learn GSAP. Why would you learn GSAP if you want to become a front-end developer when you only need to work with data? Another thing could be you might be getting a bunch of bad habits. You are writing your code in the worst way possible. Bad indentation, bad variable namings, console logs everywhere, random files created everywhere. You don't know how to use Git. You never worked with Git in a team environment. You don't even know what Git is. Probably you learned Git too fast because that's how Academy told you. So there are so many like problems that you have that could be avoided. And the, the most beautiful thing I was thinking today is that right now web development today is the easiest thing that you can do, literally. The easy, easier than today, it was five years ago when I got in, right? But from now on, it's going to become more and more and more difficult. And what used to work, you know, the Udemy courses and all that stuff, they won't work anymore because people don't want to hire Udemy developers. People want to hire professional developers. And if you want to be a professional developer, you need to work like a professional developer. There is no course, you know, that can teach you 
how to work with another human than by working with another human. And you can say, oh, Christian, you're a solo, blah, blah, blah. But prove me otherwise. Come into my program. I have a six months money back guarantee. If you don't like what I'm doing, if you don't learn anything, I'm going to give you all your money back. But until then, don't judge if you never tried it. You have nothing to lose. You can judge me after, but till then, I would suggest you to try it. So if you are interested in that, the link for applying for a consultation call with me, it's in the description. You know how to do that. Uh, put in your name, all those details, and we're going to have a chat together and see if we are right for each other. So that's all. Thanks for watching my video. Until next time, yours truly. Peace.